So if you are a Manchester United fan, you will be very aware of the fact that you support a club which is constantly, and I mean constantly, in the news. It always has been, it always will be. But it does make it quite difficult at times to decipher what's the important news going on. So today we're starting a new series called United Weekly, although this may not happen every week. But basically, I'm going to go over the top five talking points of the last, you know, five to seven days at Old Trafford. And yeah, discuss it. So let's just get into it, basically. So the first major headline this week is the injury news or the unavailable players currently at Manchester United. Christian Eriksen, of course, picked up a knee injury and is expected to be out for at least one month. Rasmus Hoyland has picked up a muscle strain and is expected to be out until December. And we've also got Diogo Dallo over here, who had to pull out of the Portugal squad. However, fortunately, in the case of Dallo, it's actually just because his wife was pregnant and having a baby. He's not injured, so congratulations to Dallo and his family. But also... Hallelujah, we haven't got another player out injured. These two, however, Ericsson and Hoyland, are both injured for, you know, the next few weeks. We'll be discussing in future videos how the club is going to deal with that. But that is definitely one of the big things which has happened this week. Again, more players injured. Why does it keep happening? Let me know in the comments down below. Is it bad luck? Is it bad training? Let me know what you think. Also in the news this week and pretty much every single week at the moment is Jadon Sancho and Eric Ten Hag not really liking each other. It's not exactly a surprise at this point. It's barely even news really, but there's constantly updates coming out. Apparently, Jadon Sancho could be moving to Saudi, although he doesn't fancy that move at this stage in his career. Juventus are interested in a loan, but not really in any sort of buy deal. Uh, Borussia Dortmund are also interested. Sancho wants to leave the club, basically. Ten Hag wants Sancho to go. Ratcliffe, apparently, if he comes in, wants Ten Hag to be friends with Sancho and kind of make up with him. Ten Hag has said, OK, I'll ask him to apologise. Sancho is saying, no, I'm not going to apologise. So he's probably leaving the club. But United apparently want 50 million for him. No one wants to pay 50 million. So, yeah, that's the Sancho news. Kind of a bit of a limbo. Ten Hag wants him out. Sancho wants out. The club wants him to make up for each other. So do the other players. They're not doing it. So he's got to go. But no one can afford him. So he's got to stay. Um, that's the Jaden Sancho news. If you want my opinion on it, I did do a video on it the other week. Truthfully, I think United are just best to cut their losses, whether that's a loan and then a permanent transfer in the summer, something like that. Sancho needs to go. I think he's a great player. I think he'll have a wonderful career somewhere else. But Jaden Sancho, Ten Hag, they're clashing. It's not working. It hasn't ever really worked for Sancho at the football club. Move on, go somewhere else and have a great career. As for Eric Ten Hag, you get someone out of the dressing room who hasn't been great for the environment. Get him gone, move on. Basically, that's the news. They need to move on. Now, as well as the news of potential outs, we've also had potential news of players coming in. Starting off with the guy behind me here, Tadebo. Again, I think this is a move which we all think is going to happen. He continues to be linked to the club. And the talks are that it would cost less than £50 million, which makes it incredibly tempting. I believe the, the rumoured figure is about £35 million. For a top-level centre-back who... Ticks a lot of the boxes what United need. That sounds like an absolute bargain. So I would definitely watch this space on the Tadebo transfer, possibly in January, possibly in the summer. We'll see. Do I still have my concerns over him as a player? Yes, but I think this move will happen. So keep an eye on it. We've also got Xao Neves over here. Another brilliant young player currently playing for Benfica. He's also represented Portugal. This is a brilliant 19-year-old midfielder. I've done a video on him yesterday, so make sure to go check that out. Again, a wonderful talent, an incredibly gifted footballer with a huge career ahead of him. I think he's going to make it to the top level and have a great career. Do I think that long-term career should be at Manchester United? Not personally, I think any sort of fee here is going to be extraordinary. Benfica are a very, very good selling club. They're going to want north of £50 million. For a profile which United don't necessarily need to prioritise at this moment in time, doesn't really make sense to me. Then we've got Yusuf Fofana over here of Monaco. The French international is a very, very good kind of box-to-box -box physical midfielder. In terms of price range and things like that, we haven't really heard any news yet. But he is another player which has been linked to the club. If we continue to see him linked, I will do a video on it. Um, let me know if you want that in the comments down below. I'll do my scout report and things like that. But in terms of the, the current news, he's been linked with the club this week. Apparently, United would be interested. So let me know, would you be interested? So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone. And now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. So probably one of the biggest bits of news at the club is all around Richard Arnold. The current, or now the former CEO of Manchester United, is gone. 
First of all, Fabrizio Romano released a tweet saying that he would most likely leave uh, come the end of the year. But that process has been sped up massively because by the end of that same day, he was given the boot. Now there's rumours about, was it on a mutual understanding? Did he choose to leave? Is it is it on good terms or was he kind of given the boot? Is it because he didn't want Ratcliffe? He kind of heavily favoured Qatar taking over the club. There's talks of that as well. Why is Richard Arnold gone? I'm not too sure. I think most people would agree though. It's a probably a good thing for the club moving forward. I think he'd done an okay job. I think he kind of changed the direction of the club. I think he put more of a focus on the football side of things. But I think the Frankie de Jong saga did not look good for him at all in terms of, you know, spending all those weeks sleeping in Barcelona not to get the guy. Didn't look great for him last summer. Then there was the handling of the last minute Mason Greenwood situation, which, you know, whatever side you're on there, you must agree that the way it was handled was really poor. And I feel like that might have been the final nail in the coffin. At that point, it always felt like he was going to go. So Manchester United are without a permanent CEO. We will have a temporary CEO in charge until, you know, more happens at the club. But currently, United do not have a CEO. What they might have very, very soon is a new 25% owner of the football club, Jim Ratcliffe. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, I should say, and Ineos. Is this going to happen? Well, we've seen more news this week, and it's actually news that this could happen today. This could happen literally today. We could see Jim Ratcliffe come into the club. Um, if not, the talks are that it should be done by the end of the international break. I believe that after that, it will take around four to eight weeks for everything to be registered properly with the Premier League and all of the relevant officials. So realistically, we're not going to see this properly in place in 2023. But hopefully he can come in in January. His team can come in January. We've seen talks that he wants Paul Mitchell, perhaps Michael Edwards, uh, Blanc. There's loads of different play, uh, people we've been linked with higher up the club. What does look good, though, is that it looks like we are going to see footballing people in charge of football matters at a football club. Sounds pretty obvious that that's what you should do. But believe it or not, the Glazers have not been doing that for the past 15 years or so. So whilst you may have wanted Qatar... This is definitely a massive step in the right direction. It's someone more interested in the club coming in, someone who's willing to dip into his own pocket and put money into the club, and as we've seen already, linked with a lot of different really good football people. If someone like Paul Mitchell was to come into the club, his kind of network with people in the sport is just different to anything that Manchester United have had over the past 10 to 15 years. So hopefully it looks like the club will be heading in a different direction. So those are, in my opinion, the biggest talking points of this week. Kind of a reasonably drama-free week, I would say, in terms of the injuries. They're annoying, but they happen in football. The, of course, the Dallow news was good news. Uh, Jaden Sancho, I think it was a saga that everyone's tired of. It's not really new news particularly. Um, we also had the players linked with the club. I think they're pretty reasonable. It's nothing crazy coming out, so that's good in that way. Uh, Richard Arnold going out is probably the biggest or the most dramatic thing which has happened, but it always felt like a matter of time. And it also seems like Sir Jim Ratcliffe is closer to taking over 25% of the football club and being put in charge of the football aspect with the Glazers being in charge of the marketing, which in my opinion is a step in the right direction. So that has been United this week, a pretty drama-free week, which is nice to see. Let me know if you like this video. It's completely different to what I normally do. We just kind of quickly rattled through a load of information. So let me know if you enjoy it. If you do, I can do it in the future. Like the video, comment, let me know if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel, get notifications on, become a channel member, join the Discord server, all of that good stuff. Make sure to do it all. But apart from that, we are finished for today's video. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.